what's up guys once again it's canard vernon stewart here for the podcast uh we're talking auburn the sec a lot of crazy stuff happening this week uh doing another mobile video you probably hear my windshield wipers going back and forth uh it's always great to be an auburn tiger war eagle we're talking about a little bit of sec football and how interesting this thing has gotten with the uh pandemic we knew at some a certain point i mean we we couldn't discount it we knew at a certain point that the some portions of the season would be interrupted it was actually interrupted before uh lsu and florida one of the best games in the sec uh canceled um, now recently uh, arguably one of the more iconic matchups in the sec alabama versus lsu now i'm an auburn fan analyst and enthusiast but lsu and alabama is a game that i tend to look forward to I actually take the time out especially if i'm not busy to actually watch that game use it usually a nail biter which alabama wins but the game is such so high consequence now this year was going to be a little different now i think alabama was going to just straight shellac lsu this year i mean it, it wasn't even going to be close if you look at the situations where mississippi state pretty much ran the ball and, and moved the ball at will against LSU. Auburn pretty much, especially once they got the defense going and creating some opportunities, had their way with LSU. I mean, it, it really, 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 really could have gotten ugly for the LSU fighting Tigers who are the defending national champions, but you wouldn't know it. Because of the pandemic, LSU is having an epically horrible season following up on a national championship now i will say this i don't know that lsu season would have been quite as bad had it not been for the pandemic you're talking about the idea of uh jamar chase coming back um maybe brennan the quarterback maybe he's healthy you have a different set of morale you have a different set of situations but Bo Pelini as the defensive coordinator is just not working he does not have he kind of he kind of has that that Kevin Steelish kind of defense to where it you know you, you take some chances and blitzing and all that other stuff but Bo Pelini does not have the personnel or has not had the time to implement his strategy with the types of players that he has this this is Dave Aranda's guys who were accustomed to Dave Aranda's system and they are not adapting well at all to Bo Pelini's system I mean it's just not working I mean teams teams that shouldn't be moving the ball at will on LSU are absolutely moving the ball at will so I'm not that guy though I'm not that guy that's going to say well uh the pandemic kind of saved LSU but then again maybe I am Maybe I am that guy that says, you know, the SEC, one of the most iconic matchups in the conference, really, you really didn't need to see a 50 to nothing win for Alabama over LSU. That That's just not a good look for the SEC. Um, this is a game, a staple game in the SEC that tends to be relatively close. You already have Florida kind of pounding up on Georgia last week in in an uncharacteristic fashion I just don't think we need this pandemic to um, damage the perception of, of some of the key, marquee matchups in the SEC now I do know teams got to get healthy we, we absolutely cannot have three weeks straight of pandemic related interruptions of the season but at the same time guys this is the reality that we live in right now you know, and I'm not calling. I, I don't think there is a buzz that is calling for the season to be canceled. Um, I've been thoroughly entertained by an all SEC schedule. So I hope this thing plays out. But at the same time, we got to take this thing, at, at, you know, at a grain of salt. I mean, these guys are still human. These guys still have to socially interact and there's still the opportunity. You even got Sam Pittman, who the coach for Arkansas who tested positive. But what I do want to know is what kind of program was, was Nick Saban on to where he could be positive like Monday and 
test negative a couple of times during the week and still be able to coach. What can can we get on that program? Can the players get on that program to where they could be some retesting to get these guys back on the field to where there'd be some postponement? What did Nick Saban do or what? I mean, what was the what was that situation? Nobody's raising enough questions for that. Um, you know, I just I knew that this would be a very difficult season to navigate through, that there would be some challenges, that there will be some because you look at Clemson, who had Trevor Lawrence, who had to sit out because of COVID-19 issues. And you see what happened there. And it's, it's just showing one of the things that is showing is how important quarterback play is in the outcome of the teams. Georgia's seeing it. You you know, you can have a star-studded list of five-star recruits, offensive linemen, defensive linemen, linebackers, wide receivers. But it turns out what we're seeing is if you don't have continuity with the guy that touches the ball every time the ball is snapped, that could change the total trajectory of your team. And I don't know how this works, but when the quarterback goes down, the defense tends to suck. Usually, Clemson actually plays pretty good on defense. Quarterback goes down, they suck. Georgia against Florida. Quarterback play has been horrible all year. Defense got some injuries in play. Defense plays absolutely terrible. Un, un, really uncharacteristic of a Kirby Smart defense to play as off balance as they did against Florida. This game was very remnants of the Georgia versus LSU game in the SEC championship. Almost kind of mirrored that game. The only thing that was different was Georgia didn't jump out to a 14 to nothing lead. But you see, when you go back to that, that SEC championship game, you see a lot of opportunities left on the table with Georgia. Had a touchdown, had a, a, a lot of key drops early in the game. And when you have such a depleted team playing against a, a, a relatively good football team and Dan, Dan Mullen has kind of changed the culture in uh, with the Florida Gators, which is kind of glaring, glaring as to what's happening in South Carolina with Will Muschamp. It seems like Will Muschamp is kind of taking his show on the road to South Carolina to where they play okay on defense, but Will Muschamp just doesn't seem to be the guy no matter where he goes. You know, and I'm thinking, now this is a very bold, this is a very unpopular opinion. I'm starting to think that Will Muschamp equals Kirby Smart. Because Kirby Smart's, their schemes, their approach to the game is outdated. You look at Kirby Smart at George. I know I'm kind of rambling a little bit, but I just want to talk to you guys tonight. Kirby Smart is recruiting as if this is Alabama in the early 2000 or in the late 2010s, around that time when Gus Malzahn took on the job at Auburn. And then Auburn actually torched uh, Alabama in 2014 for 44 points. And that's when Nick Saban realized that he needed to make a change. And what did he do? He brought Lane Kiffin on. He said, we got to score more points. We got to figure out a way to consistently score more. Maybe, maybe Lane Kiffin was there in 2014 maybe I, I can't remember but either way maybe it was 2013 though when Auburn had the uh, run pass option had the Nick Marshall thing going on pretty much running the ball passing the ball moving the ball at will against Alabama Nick Saban lost that game and that's when he realized hey we got to change some things this old hard nose beating folks 30 to 17 stuff is not going to work we got to score some points. And he made the adjustment. Nick Saban made the adjustment. But it seemed like Kirby Smart at Georgia and Will Muschamp, they're still stuck in what worked while they were under the Nick Saban regime. Whereas their master or their teacher or they were apprentices to Nick Saban, he elevated his game to where they're scoring 40, 50 points against teams, whereas they're still stuck in that thinking that defense wins championships. Absolutely 
not all the way true. Now, defense is making the right stops at the right time with a good offense. Yes, that could lead to a championship, but you got to score points. And in most of these games, when you look at the national championship, you look at the SEC championship, if you're not scoring points, then you don't give yourself a high percentage chance to win games. And that's what we're seeing here. And this pandemic is actually making it even more evident that you got teams have got to ever uh, elevate offensively. And I think that's even where Auburn is headed. They know they're recruiting guys like Tank Bigsby, Xavion Capers, Kobe Hudson, big JJ pegs. They know they got to score points. They got to have a better offensive line in order to move forward and compete in this particular genre of college football. I mean, it's, it's crazy out here, man. The pandemic at a certain point, we'll get to a degree of normalcy. But for now, it is what it is. I'm hoping that the season can 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 get back going. You got a week to where players can um, quarantine and hopefully, you know, there's enough players on the roster to meet the NCAA or SEC requirements to actually fill the team for the week. We knew this was going to be a problem, and it has been. It, it, it came to fruition. Like the video, comment, and subscribe. Matter of fact, you don't even have to like the video. Dislike it if you want to. But I need those comments. What do you think about the latest activity in college football and how it is impacting overall? As always, it's great to be an Auburn Tiger War Eagle. We're talking to SEC uh, college football as well. And as always, it's great to be an Auburn Tiger War Eagle. I hope you guys have a good night. Sheesh. It's getting crazy out here, man. Protect yourself. Wear a mask. I'm assuming that I uh, haven't heard too much about COVID-19 um, situations to where it's been really bad, but apparently it's still um, on the rise. Take care, guys.